Okay, over here to the right, we have a diagram that kind of illustrates what's going on. This is the graph of y equals 2 square root of x. This is the line x equals 1. Found the point of intersection to be 1, 2, and of course this point is 0, 0. And that green vertical strip is what we're going to focus on to answer this part. And on the next board, we'll also look at horizontal strips for finding the area. And that would mean a horizontal strip would look like this. Where, of course, we're ignoring this portion of that strip. And for the volume about x and y axis, so you have two choices for each one. You can use either the washer method, which is this O dot R stands for outer radius, and this is the inner radius. And this is sometimes called the disk method when the inner radius is zero. Okay, so the key to problems like this, where you can go back the fourth between horizontal and vertical strips, is to realize that if y equals 2 radical x, that x equals 1 fourth y squared solving for x and <clears throat> it helps when you're doing something like this to set up uh, the coordinates of a typical point in terms of x and in terms of y so for this vertical strip for each x between 0 and 1 the y coordinate is 2 square root of x if we're thinking about moving along the y-axis from 0 to 2, for every y between 0 and 2, the x-coordinate is 1 fourth y squared. So that's that's the represent, or an expression for the representation of this point right here. And of course, this point for every y would be 1 comma y because we moved from 0 to 1 along the x-axis okay so for vertical strips we want an expression for the area of a typical strip and that's just the y coordinate at the top minus the y coordinate at the bottom which is zero so there's your expression <coughs> for using vertical strips and it looks like you get four thirds for the horizontal strips we have to come up with an expression for this length right here, which that's a horizontal strip. So an expression for the length of that strip is the x-coordinate at the right minus the x-coordinate at the left. So that's where this is 1 minus 1 fourth y squared. And we're adding up all these horizontal strips from 0 to 2. And letting the number of strips, of course, approach infinity. And you can see we get the same answer both ways. I'll let you evaluate the integral. This one, obviously, was probably a little easier to evaluate. Now, when we start talking about volumes of revolution, it's the same idea. If we're going to rotate about the x-axis, focus on the axis of revolution. If you want to use the disk or washer method, your typical strips are perpendicular to the axis of revolution. And we're using that pi. Outer radius squared would be, well, the distance from, from here up to here is 2 radical x for every x. And I got to square that. And I get that's what I get. For the shell method, we want our typical strips to be parallel to the axis of revolution. And now we're using 2 pi times the average radius, which is the distance from the axis of revolution to the typical shell. And that's this coordinate right here. Why? Uh, the height of the shell is a little bit trickier. That's this 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 distance right here and that would be a horizontal strip so 
an expression for its length is the x coordinate at the right minus the x coordinate at the left. And there it is. And you can see that these both evaluate to 2 pi. I'll leave the work to you. For accessing or for determining the volume of revolution about the y axis, if we're going to use the disk washer method, we want our typical strip to be perpendicular to the axis of revolution. And then we use outer radius squared minus inner radius squared with the pi on the outside. So the outer radius is the distance from the shell out to here, which is just one. So there's the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. And that would be the distance from here to here which for every y is one-fourth y squared. So there's the inner radius squared. It evaluates to 5.02, blah, blah, blah. Uh, for using the shell method, we want our typical strip to be parallel to the axis of revolution. The formula is 2 pi times the radius or the distance to the center of the shell from the axis of revolution. That would just be this distance right here, which is x. So there's the average radius. And then the height of the shell would just be 2 radical x minus 0, or 2 radical x. And you can see these both evaluate to the same thing. And there's the exact answer right there. OK, there you go. A little longer than I had hoped. But if you have any questions, post a comment. Thank you.